Hello! Welcome to a new installment of JavaScript Weekly. I'm your host, Harry Wolf, and I'm here today with a few updates about some things in the JavaScript world that you might have missed that you should know about. So, without further ado, let's get started. The first thing to talk about this week is React's patent was back in the news again where many people up in arms and talking about and worried about and debating about and thinking about and it just never seems to stop about the React patent clause. Uh, effectively, React has a clause in their license of usage that says in so many words that if you use React and you sue Facebook, then you get the license for React revoked. Don't quote me on that, that's kind of the gist. But every couple of months, this seems to get back into the circle of debate that people are worried about. They're, they're mad that it exists, they don't want it there anymore. Uh, this finally culminated this past week with a blog post on the official Facebook open source website talking about how they are not going to remove the patent clause. They tried to explain again why they have it. Um, definitely encourage you to go read it and try to make your own informed opinion if you can. Personally, I think it's a lot of worry about nothing. Nine times out of 10, this isn't going to affect you at all. That one time out of 10 is definitely the exception to the rule. But until that happens, I don't think you have to worry about it too much. But people were just reacting a lot to it. So I guess that fits the bill. In the world of Babel, they have a new REPL for you to play with, a REPL being read, eval, print, line, that you can kind of play with your uh, Babel transform code. It's nifty, built on React and I believe CodeMirror, and it's free for you to try. It looks the same to me, but it's new, and new's good, right? Right, new's good, yeah, good, okay. Not in the land of JavaScript news, but in the land of iOS and Swift, there was a new proposal on how to do async code in Swift. And what was exciting about that to me is that it's going along with a similar syntax as JavaScript with async await. Implementation a little bit different, doesn't really matter here, but kind of cool to see this async await that everyone has to learn when using that for JavaScript being increasingly used across different languages. I know Josh wasn't the first, and in this example, it's definitely not the last. And last but not least, in the world of Webpack, there was a new application release, the Webpack Dashboard application by Ken Wheeler. It's a fun way to run your Webpack builds and to have a fancy little graphs and uh, charts there that you can actually see what's going on. Webpack's just taking over everything nowadays, and it's pretty cool to see. Well, that's it for this week of JavaScript. Not too much excitement going on this week, but hopefully you learned some things that you might have missed. Please do hit the subscribe button if you like what you're hearing. Feel free to tweet me on the Twitter sphere, and definitely do tune in again next week. Until then, adios!